biodiversity. You are a part of the biodiversity on Earth. What is biodiversity? Bio means life, and diversity refers to variety. So biodiversity is the variety of life. But there are really several types of biodiversity. Biodiversity is species diversity. Species diversity includes all of the different types of living things, from microscopic bacteria to the large white-tailed deer and white oak. Some people believe that Illinois is a state with little more biodiversity than corn and soybeans, but Illinois actually has a great variety of species. Nearly 54,000 species have been identified in Illinois so far, with many more to be discovered. This number does not include the bacteria, an immense group of organisms which are structurally different from other living things. Scientists estimate there are millions of kinds of bacteria. Biodiversity is also genetic diversity. Let's look at humans as an example. Unless they are identical twins, no two people will be the same. There is a tremendous amount of diversity in the human species, as there is in most species. Genetic diversity includes the variety within species, which is determined by the genes on the chromosomes. Genetic diversity makes every living thing unique. Coded messages in the genes are passed from one generation to the next. The results of the code are sometimes visible, but more likely to be unseen within the cells. Genetic diversity is a safeguard against future problems like disease and natural disasters. In Illinois, the greater prairie chicken provides an example of loss of genetic diversity. In the 1860s, millions of prairie chickens were found in the native grasslands of the state. By the early 1990s, only about 50 prairie chickens were living in Illinois, in Jasper and Marion counties. Conversion of prairie to agricultural land resulted in an enormous loss of habitat for the birds. With no place to live and no food to eat, the birds died. The surviving birds had such a small population size that they lost some of their genetic information. The loss of genetic diversity affected the ability of these birds to survive because their eggs were not successfully hatching. The Illinois Department of Natural Resources began a program in 1992 to introduce prairie chickens from other states into the Illinois prairie chicken populations. By breeding with these new birds, it was hoped that the Illinois birds could improve their genetic diversity. Approximately 500 prairie chickens were trapped in Minnesota, Nebraska, and Kansas over a seven-year period and flown by airplane to Illinois for release at the Prairie Ridge State Natural Area. Overall egg quality and hatching ability did improve. Today the population has increased and seems to be maintaining itself well. Biodiversity is also the habitats of all living things. The more good quality habitat types that are available, the greater the number of species that can occupy them. Illinois includes the edge of five major ecological regions in the United States. The eastern deciduous forest, the tall grass prairie, the southern coastal plain, the Ozark uplift, and the northern boreal forest. Each of these areas has smaller, more specialized habitats within them, the natural divisions. The unusually rich diversity of life in our state is due to the variety of habitats in the 14 natural divisions. Let's take a quick tour of each of the natural divisions. The Wisconsin Driftless Division is part of a larger region that extends into Wisconsin, Iowa, and Minnesota. It has rugged terrain because it has not been covered by glaciers. The rolling hills and wooded ridges include the highest elevation in Illinois at 1,257 feet above sea level. With the coldest climate in the state, many of the organisms that live here are typical of areas found further north in the United States. An unusual feature of this natural division is the algific slopes. They exist on north-facing rocky slopes that retain ice underground for most of the year. When the air temperature is 90 degrees Fahrenheit, the surface temperature of an algific slope may be 42 degrees. The Rock River Hill Country Division includes the Rock River watershed in northwestern Illinois. Its low hills once supported prairies on the uplands and woodlands along the streams. Sandstone outcrops along the Rock River provide habitat for distinct plant species. This area was covered by glaciers. The Northeastern Morainal Division near Lake Michigan includes beach sands, dunes, sedge marshes, and peatlands. 
Peatlands have acidic conditions created by lack of drainage and buildup of layers of peat. These wetlands support unusual plants like the pitcher plant and tamarack. Landforms in this division are the result of debris left by melting glaciers. The largest natural division in Illinois is the Grand Prairie Division. Approximately one-third of what is now Illinois was originally covered with tall grass prairie. Because it was glaciated, the Grand Prairie has flat landscapes, silt, soil, and poor natural drainage. Today, prairie communities are among the rarest in Illinois. Most of this land has been converted to agricultural use. Rivers, bottomlands, and backwater lakes of much of the Mississippi and the Illinois rivers are included in the Upper Mississippi River and Illinois River Bottomlands Division. The broad floodplains and gravel terraces of this region are covered with forests, prairies, rivers, lakes, and oxbow lakes. Most of the area was glaciated. The Illinois River and Mississippi River Sand Areas Division consists of the sand deposits left by the runoff from melting glaciers. These areas exist along the Illinois and Mississippi rivers and the dunes on bluffs in Joe Davies County. Dry sand prairie, dunes, and scrub oak forests are the main communities. Some plants and animals found here more typically dwell in the shortgrass prairies west of Illinois. The glacial plain of the Western Forest Prairie Division historically had prairies on the flat uplands and forests elsewhere. Rock outcrops of sandstone, limestone, and shale are common in some areas. This division has a good natural drainage system. The narrow band of river bluffs, limestone cliffs, and rugged terrain of the Middle Mississippi Border Division can be found along the floodplains of the Mississippi and Lower Illinois rivers. Limestone cliffs and outcrops are common. Oak hickory forests grow in the ravines and on the north and east facing slopes. Hill prairies, caves, and sinkholes are also found here. This area contains both glaciated and unglaciated land. The Southern Till Plain Division is a large, relatively flat area in south-central Illinois. This area was covered by an ancient glacier. The streams in the area were important for draining the meltwaters of later glaciations. The clay soils support a mixture of forests and prairies. The Wabash Border Division includes the bottomlands and associated upland forests of the Wabash River and its tributaries, the Vermilion and Little Vermilion Rivers and Crabapple Creek. This division has trees that are more commonly found in the forests of the eastern United States, such as the beech and tulip trees. Nearly all of this area was covered by glaciers at some time. Found in southwestern Illinois, the Ozark Division is part of the Ozark Uplift, a dome-like structure of bedrock centered in the Ozark Mountains of Missouri. Hill prairies, caves, sinkholes, and sandstone ravines are commonly found in the area. Many species that live here are typical of the Ozarks and are present nowhere else in Illinois. A portion of this division was glaciated. South from Alton along the Mississippi River is the Lower Mississippi River Bottomlands Division. This small area of the state was generally not glaciated. Once covered with prairies, wetlands, rivers, and forests, most of the land is used today for agriculture. The Mississippi River here is muddy and its fish species include those tolerant of silt. The LaRue Swamp is part of this division. Combined with the adjacent Pine Hills of the Ozark Division, LaRue Swamp and Pine Hills contain 43% of the plant species known in Illinois. The Shawnee Hills Division is the unglaciated hill country at the southern tip of Illinois. It was originally forested except for small rocky openings. It is characterized by a high east-west ridge of sandstone cliffs and a series of lower hills. The Coastal Plain Division is an unglaciated region of swampy, forested bottomlands and low hills. The uplands are composed of gravel, clay, and sand hills with a covering of wind-deposited silt. The lowlands have loam and clay soils. Swamps support a great number of species which are more commonly found in the southern United States. Another way to look at the biodiversity of Illinois is to examine our major habitat types, prairie, forest, and wetland. Prairies are communities in which the landscape is dominated by non-woody plants, mainly grasses. The prairie in Illinois is tall grass prairie and can be divided into six types, black soil prairie, sand prairie, hill prairie, gravel prairie, dolomite prairie, and shrub prairie. 
Prairies are complex ecosystems in which plants, grazing mammals, burrowing animals, insects, fire, and climate interact in balance. The prairie habitat is the most diverse in Illinois and includes more than 800 species of plants. Prairies have hot summers and cold winters and are often subject to drought. Fires are a regular feature of prairie lands. Historically, fire probably occurred often enough to burn every Illinois prairie at least once every one to five years. Without fires, prairies quickly develop into forests. Illinois had an estimated 21.6 million acres of prairie in 1820. That equates to about 61% of the land in the state. All but nine Illinois counties contained some prairie habitat. By 1900, most of the prairies had been converted to agricultural or urban uses. Illinois prairies currently cover about 6,100 acres and are small, with most less than 10 acres in size. Loss of prairie habitat and fragmentation of the remaining prairies has caused a loss in the natural biodiversity that prairies contain. The small populations of prairie organisms that exist in Illinois today are the types that tend to lose genetic diversity over time. With small numbers, the populations tend to inbreed. This process can result in organisms no longer capable of successful reproduction. Approximately 75% of the wildlife habitat in Illinois is found within forests. More than half of the native plant species and more than half of the threatened and endangered species in Illinois are forest residents. Forest types in Illinois include bottomland forest, also a type of wetland, upland deciduous forests, areas which are not subject to flooding and containing trees that lose their leaves in the fall. This type of forest is found in every county and is the most common forest type in Illinois. Coniferous forest with cone-bearing evergreen trees and southern Illinois lowland forest with woody plants more than 20 feet tall that are adapted to living in water. Illinois had an estimated 13.8 million acres of forests in 1820. Today, forests cover about 4.3 million acres, approximately one-third of the original acreage. Only about 11,600 acres of the original forest remains untouched. Many native species have been lost from the reduction of forest habitat and fragmentation of the remaining forests. Wetlands are transitional areas between land and water where the groundwater table is at or near the surface or where the land is covered by shallow water. Wetlands are important to ecological and environmental balance. They help control the flooding of rivers and streams. They clean polluted water by acting as a filter, allowing sediments, nutrients, and pesticides to settle out of the water. Thousands of species of organisms depend on wetlands and water-related habitats, from fish, frogs, and turtles, to deer, river otters, beavers, bald eagles, and waterfowl, Wetlands provide important breeding, nesting, and feeding areas. Wetlands are the habitat for many endangered and threatened species. In addition, many plants live only in aquatic habitats. They include the bald cypress tree, silver maple, rose mallow, pondweed, duckweed, and cattails. The button bush, buttercup, and American lotus are also among the many types of vegetation in wetland communities. Several types of wetland habitats occur in Illinois. They include bottomland forest, large timbered areas bordering swamps or rivers that are subject to frequent flooding, Lake Michigan, the third largest Great Lake and the sixth largest freshwater lake in the world, lakes, ponds, and reservoirs, which are wetlands and deep water habitats that tend to be man-made in Illinois. Marshes, composed mostly of non-woody plants. This productive wetland has standing water for long periods throughout the growing season. Peatlands, acidic lakes originally formed by glaciers that fill in with plant materials. Rivers and streams, deep water habitats contained in a channel and with flowing water. Swamps, with standing water and plants adapted to growing in it. Temporary water supplies, formed anywhere that water can be spread from its normal channel or can be held in a depression in the landscape. These wetlands are important feeding, resting, and reproduction sites for many animals. And wet prairies, with moist to wet soils and standing water present for only brief periods during the growing season. The plants are mostly non-woody. 
Illinois originally had an estimated 8 million acres of wetlands. More than 95% of these acres have been drained, resulting in a great loss of natural biodiversity. Today, high-quality wetlands are rare in Illinois. Only about 6,000 acres remain. Early European settlers of the land that became Illinois were concerned with surviving. Resources appeared unlimited. They navigated and explored, logged, farmed, fished, hunted, scavenged, and constructed. They acted without knowledge of the limit of natural resources or how fragile the land can be. The people of Illinois are important controllers of the landscape and its diversity. Human activities have drastically reduced the diversity of habitats in Illinois and the overall biodiversity of the state. When habitats are altered, the organisms that live there are killed, must adapt, or must move to different habitats. Ecological relationships are disturbed, and the area's ability to perform services like flood control, water purification, and nutrient recycling are diminished. Some of the habitats that originally occurred in our state can be found in nature preserves, state parks, conservation areas, and other protected sites that shelter the state's biodiversity. Some habitats are very small and rare. Habitat loss, introduced species, pollution, population growth, and overconsumption are the main threats to biodiversity today. Attempts are being made to restore habitats to their original condition. Knowing how to restore a habitat is difficult, as it requires a complete understanding of what the original habitat contained. What is biodiversity? Biodiversity is the variety of living things, the genes that make them unique, and the habitats that they live in. It is also the connections between them. According to many scientists, loss of biodiversity is one of the most urgent environmental problems facing our planet. The extinction of a species results in the loss of genetic information. The natural rate of extinction is about one species every 1,000 years. It is estimated that today, three species on Earth become extinct every hour. Degrading our natural systems threatens services like water purification and nutrient recycling. These are the services that support life on Earth. For humans, this degradation may lead to the potential loss of medicines, foods, products, and jobs. Every person is able to protect biodiversity. Scientists are working together to conduct biological inventories to learn more about the diversity of life throughout the world. Scientists are also working to understand connections among living things so that we can better understand what we need to protect. Many scientists believe that the future of the Earth's biodiversity will depend on a human love for other organisms and the values people place on these resources. Human appreciation of organisms provides the greatest hope for preserving biodiversity. Because each species contains unique biological and genetic information, conservation of species may be critical to the future quality of our lives. All species are significant, many in unknown but potentially vital ways. All living things depend upon other living things. We must value biodiversity for its own sake and try to preserve it.